All right, seven three sums and differences. Make sure that you carefully use these formulas when you are uh, processing what you're looking at here. For example, if you have a minus sign there, notice it's a minus sign on the bottom, so make sure you're using the minus sign when you are now using your formula. So for this particular example, let's kind of expedite this process. Since it says the sign of x minus y, make sure that when you write your equation, you keep the minus sign in there. So now it's time to start substituting. One thing to notice about the substitution is that they didn't give us all the information here. They gave us the sign of x. They gave us the sign of y. In other words, they only gave us this piece here and this piece here. What they did not give us was the cosine of x, nor did they give us the, uh, the cosine of y. So we need to go and get those. So here's how we do it. Note that your two right triangles here, uh, that there are two right triangles can be made based on the fact that the sine of x is 4 ninths and the sine of y is 1 fourth. So if we understand that the 4 is the opposite and the y, 9 is the hypotenuse, similar over here, opposite and hypotenuse, we have these two triangles here. So using Pythagorean theorem, we can then collect this adjacent side here by taking 81, subtracting 16, which leads us to 65. And so then our adjacent side here is the square root of 65. Over here, if the hypotenuse is 4, that makes that square 16. We subtract the 1 square, which is 1. So 16 minus 1, we get 15. And so then the adjacent side there is the square root of 15. And so now we substitute. The sine of x was 4 ninths. The sine of y was 1 fourth. They told us that right up there. Now we can collect the cosine of y. Cosine of y being adjacent over hypotenuse. So we have the square root of 15 over 4. And then we can collect the cosine. Square root 65 over 9. And now from here, now it's time to multiply. So we multiply the tops and the tops and the bottoms and the bottoms. Now notice that you have a common denominator here, 36. So when it comes time to combine these together, just write one fraction. Uh, square roots cannot be subtracted. So these are unlike terms. So the best we can do here is write 4 square roots of 15 minus the square root of 65 on top. And then we have our square root, uh, sorry, we have 36 down below. And that's our answer. Let's move on to the next one. Note now that it's cosine of x minus y. And since it's saying cosine of x minus y, that means we have the minus right down here on the bottom. Now what they want you to use over here when you use your formula is notice our minus sign was on the bottom. They want us to use the bottom sign here, so a plus sign. So when we use our formula, we're going to put a plus sign right in there for our cosine of x minus y. Now notice that they still only gave us half of the information that we need. We need four trig ratios. They only gave us two. They gave us here the cosine of x and the cosine of y. They only gave us that half. We need to find the other half. To find the other half, let's make those right triangles again. All right, so for one triangle, if x is our angle right here, cosine, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So this time they gave us the 5 here and the 12 there. Pythagorean theorem tells us that if we have the 12 squared, which is 144, subtract 5 squared, which is 25, 144 minus 25, so that gives us the square root of 119. Moving on to the next triangle, if we have our y here, and we have a jason over hypotenuse once again with 11, and then 12 for the uh, uh, hypotenuse. So the 144 minus the 121 gives us 23. So we have the square root of 23 there. So now we can take the signs of both of these sine now would be your square root 119 over 12 and your sine here would be square root 23 over 12 and we can now substitute those back into our equation over here.
So now we have the cosine of x, which is 5 over 12. Cosine of y, which was 11 over 12. We're going to multiply those together. Now we're going to add the sine of x, which was the square root of 119 over 12. Sine of y, square root 23 over 12. Multiply, multiply, multiply. Notice our denominator here will be a common denominator of 144. We have 55 plus, oh boy, square root 119 times square root 23. Uh, 1737. And there's our exact answer. Ta da! Alright, so the other kind of problem. When you're looking at these ones here and you have the cosine of 165, uh, we got to find another way of finding the exact value. Remember, trying to find the exact values of an angle like 165 that's not on the unit circle becomes a pretty difficult task. Unless, of course, you find a way to use two unit circle angles that can add up to 165, like 120 and 45. So let's go ahead and use those two angles and use the same sum uh, formulas that we were using on the last couple problems. So your first move on these problems here is rewrite that cosine of 165 and let's rewrite it as the cosine of 120 degrees plus 45 degrees. And make a special note of which one we're using here, cosine, and we're doing a cosine sum. So because we're using a cosine sum, notice that here, plus sign on top, we got to use the minus sign on top. So let me speed write that formula here. So there we have it here, making sure that you're paying close attention to the sum here once again, and make sure you put a minus sign right there. That really trips students up the most. So we have cosine 120, cosine 45, sine 120, sine 45. Now the rest of this work now just boils down to your 120 degree angle and your 45 degree angle and writing down those sines and cosines. Okay, so let's go ahead and put those in. So cosine 120, negative 1 half, cosine 45, square root 2 over 2, drop the minus sign in there, sine 120, square root 3 over 2, sine 45, square root 2 over 2. Plug all those in there. Now it's time to multiply. Notice that you're going to get a common denominator here of 4. Notice with this numerator here, multiplying those together gives you a negative square root of 2. Let's put that minus sign right where it should be, right between these two fractions. And then we have square root 3, square root 2. That makes a square root of 3 times 2, which is 6. There's our exact answer. Let's duplicate our work on a similar problem here, except now with sine of 105. So being able to look at a unit circle and try and break this apart, two angles that we can use to add to 105 that are on the unit circle. How about 60 degrees? And let's add 45 degrees. So sine formula, with a plus sign right there, sine, we don't switch the sign when we use our formulas. So we have sine of 60, cosine 60, not 60, but 45, and then minus cosine 60, sine 45. Unit circle, wicked fast. Boom, there we go. Square root 3 over 2, square root 2 over 2, 1 half, square root 2 over 2. Everything's positive because we're in the first quadrant. So we multiply. Square root 6. Multiply. Square root 2 with a minus sign in between. Oh, should it be a minus sign? Look at that. I made a big mistake there, right? Plus sign with sign, right? Plus sign with sign. Plus sign right there, too. And so then we have a square root 2. And then square root, uh, and then the 2 is down below. This is our common denominator of 4. Alright, so what we'll do here is we'll, we'll stop this video and uh, make another video that's exclusively dealing with uh, this tangent problem here. Um, just so that way you guys are ready for it when it comes to the homework and you don't have to fast forward or advance through a longer video to get there. Alright, 